Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. Major scandal just erupted before our eyes, and the MSM is ignoring it. American voters have some big decisions to make soon, not the least of which is who to give control of Congress to. Despite the fact that every individual has to assess the candidates in their individual region, understanding that every liberal candidate is a vote for an agenda that doesn't prioritize freedom and safety is paramount. While there are many issues that conservatives and liberals disagree on, oftentimes we try to assume that it's all theoretical and that in reality, everyone wants Americans to be safe and happy. And while that might be true, the history of many Democrats in Congress would sharply disagree with that. One of the more recent demonstrations of that lack of interest in national safety has to do with Middle Easterners being allowed access to congressional computers and documents. While it would be very reassuring to chalk this up to a big misunderstanding, the case just keeps evolving, and reasonable doubt keeps shrinking. Chicks on the right dedicated a post to remind us who Democratic Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz saw fit to expose our national secrets to, and just how bad his ties really are. Imran Awan is Debbie Wasserman Schultz's former IT staffer who was arrested for bank fraud after attempting to flee the country. Before his attempted escape, the FBI raided his home and found a ton of smashed hard drives. Oh! And he has a bunch of weird financial dealings. He's suspected of selling U.S. secrets to foreign agents and was indicted on four counts including bank fraud and making false statements. New information, from Daily Caller, has arisen that informs us of what Awam is tied to in the Middle East. Faisal Abad, Pakistan, the father of Imran Awan, an IT aide to Rep. Debbie Wasserman Schultz who investigators concluded made unauthorized access to house servers, transferred a USB drive to a Pakistani senator and former head of a Pakistani intelligence agency, the father's ex-business partner, Rashid Minyas, alleged. Minyas told the Daily Caller News Foundation that Imran Awan's father, Haji Ashraf Awan, was giving data to Pakistani official Raymond Malik and that Imran bragged he had the power to change the U.S. president. Asked for how he knew this, he said that on one occasion in 2008 when a USB was given to Raymond Malik by Imran's father, my brother Abdul Razak was with his father. After Imran's father deliver, sick, USB to Raymond Malik, four Pakistani, government intelligence, agents were with his father 24-hour on duty to protect him, he said. Minus did not say what was on the USB. The DCNF traveled to Pakistan for this story and interviewed numerous residents who interacted with Imran, and they confirmed that he does travel that country with a contingent of armed Pakistani government officials and routinely brags about mysterious political power. Minus said Imran Awan said to me directly these words, see how I control a White House on my fingertip. He say he can fire the Prime Minister or change the US President, Minus said. Why they're claiming big stuff, I, didn't, understand till now. Nearly Imran's entire immediate family was on the House payroll working as IT aides to one-fifth of House Democrats, and he began working for the House in 2004. The oversight is incredible, and seemingly not slowing down. Apparently, no matter who we vote for, they have the ability to hire anyone at all, without making sure those people are on the up and up. Most of us probably take for granted that the fortress that is Capitol Hill wouldn't give out security passes to just anyone. But according to another Daily Caller News Foundation report, Congress members are allowed to, and apparently, do wave background checks on those that they hire. Every one of the 44 House Democrats who hired Pakistan-born IT aides who later allegedly made unauthorized access to congressional data appears to have chosen to exempt them from background checks, according to congressional documents. Among the red flags in Abid's background were a $1.1 million bankruptcy, six lawsuits against him or a company he owned and at least three misdemeanor convictions including for DUI and driving on a suspended license, according to Virginia court records. Public court records show that Imran and Abed operated a car dealership referred to as CIA that took $100,000 from an Iraqi government official who is a fugitive from U.S. authorities. Numerous members of the family were tied to cryptic LLCs such as New Dawn 2001, operated out of Imran's residence, Virginia Corporation records show. Imran was the subject of repeated calls to police by multiple women and had multiple misdemeanor convictions for driving offenses, according to court records. It's scary to think that painstaking process that takes place in order to keep privileged information, privileged, can be circumvented in a moment, and the perpetrators can be being paid to do it. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click, like, and subscribe. Thank you.